How's it going everybody? Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming and this is a special request RPG Maker MV tutorial for Mega Man 91646 and he says the set move route really confused me can someone explain? Mega Man the RPG Maker MV engine has a really awesome movement control uh, feature function built into it and it would be a good idea to know how to use it so let's take a look at it. You can call upon the set movement route uh, from many different ways. You can call upon it in a common event. You can call upon it inside the event. You can control multiple movement patterns uh, for many events inside a single event. But for this, what we're going to do is control individual movement events using parallel process as a trigger to have like a dynamic city. So you're walking around and all your NPCs are moving around and there's birds flying above everybody and uh, you'll be able to use movement routes to uh, have multiple things happening at the same time. So in order to get to movement routes, you go inside any event, you'll create a new event, go to tab two, and you'll see set movement route. So let's take a look at the top left. Here we have uh, what we want to target with our movement. So basically this little section here is saying what's moving, what do you want to move? And so we can select the make the player move, we can make this event move, or we can make any of our other events move if we've named the events. So EV001, what does all that mean? Well, if you look at the top left, in all your events they have a name. So we'll say Spinner Dude for this guy. So if we were to look at this, well because this event is Spinner Dude, we won't uh, see Spinner Dude. But if we were to look at another event inside a movement, uh, movement route we'll see that this event can also control the spinner dude so that's basically what you're doing is selecting what event you want to move so underneath that you have your sequence of events and everything right here is gonna play out from top to bottom so it's gonna make this event turn down it's gonna make it wait for five frames then turn left and then do the rest of it Underneath that we have options for our movement route. The first option is repeat movements. So what's going to happen is if this is not a parallel event, then it's going to, uh, and you want it to happen multiple times, well you can have it repeat its movements over and over and over. The next option is skip if cannot move. And this is something you want to use when you're moving the player around. <clears throat> because if you force the player to move into a wall or a solid object, and it can't get there, well that's the end of the game. You have to basically close the program and open it again because uh, it cannot get past this event and it cannot complete its uh, event. So it'll freeze if you have the player move left and he's facing right here it, and, it can't, and you don't have skip to cannot move, well it's gonna lock up the game. The next one is wait for completion and what this is gonna do, it's gonna wait for everything to happen before it continues to the next thing. Um, also, if it's not a parallel process, wait for completion will force the player to be unable to act until all of the movement routes have happened. So when you use it, it's up to you and you'll decide, well, I want this dialogue to finish before the player can start walking around uh, on its own, on the player's own free will. So we'll wait for completion for all the movement sequence storyline to happen. Next we have movement commands. Most of them are self-explanatory, but we'll go over them. Move up, down, left, right. It's going to make the, the event that you're targeting move one tile in that direction. Also, you can have them move uh, like up and right as one action, like diagonal. <clears throat> you can move towards the player. Oh, we can move at random, which will just give a random movement, which is good for certain NPCs around town that you uh, don't want them to have like a fixed pattern. You, you want them to freely move around. You can select move at random as a movement route, but you can also just set, set their movement to random right here. So that's another thing you can do. You can have it move towards the player or move away from the player. One step forward, one step backwards. Basically, this is going to mimic the last thing it did. So if it was moving to the left and you say one step forward, it's going to go to the left again. If they were moving down, they would move down again. Backwards is going to do the inverse of that. If they were moving down, then step backwards is going to move them up. Jump is going to make the event uh, just hop to that, uh, to that location. 
So you'll see offset, X and Y, what does that mean? Well, X is your up and down axes and Y is your left to right axes. And as you go into the negative, it goes higher for the X. <clears throat> and as you go positive, it goes down. And Y, the negative goes left and the positive goes right. Wait command is basically just going to pause the event, give the give it time for it to do that. If we didn't do wait commands in front and and uh, in between these things, then what would happen is it would spin around so fast that you wouldn't even be able to tell it was spinning. It's just going to kind of blink because it's going so fast. It's moving all of those every frame. So this is going to put some delay in between the spin so that it doesn't look like uh, it's spinning super duper fast. We could even increase this delay. Keep in mind when you're adding weights in your movement route and you have wait for completion on, when you're not using a parallel process, then it'll also make the player unable to act for those amount of frames. So it's gonna extend the time that it takes for this movement route to complete. Turn up, turn, uh, turn left, turn down, all of those, it's, gonna, it's not gonna move. Uh, the tile that the event or thing you're targeting is on, but it's going to change the direction that it's facing. And you can also have it work relatively. So if we were facing down and we say turn 90 degrees to the right, it's going to turn left actually. And if we have it, uh, if it's facing left and we do turn 180, it's going to face right. And we can also have more variance. Turn 90 degrees left or right, it's going to be random. Turn at random is also there. Turn towards the player, away from the player. Movement routes can control switches. You can turn switches on and off. You can change the frequency and speed of the event uh, that you set right here. You can set the speed and the frequency right here. And movement routes can change that speed or frequency if you wanted to. You can uh, turn the walking animation on or off. You can turn the stepping animation on or off, which are options you have down here. You can have dir direction fix on or off, and what that'll do is like, say your the event is moving down, but you turn on direction fix and then you have it move up. Well, the character or the thing that you're targeting will go up, but they won't face up. They'll still be facing down, but moving up. So direction fix, you turn it on, and then you have them, uh, you know, move down, move down, and whatever direction they were facing, they're they're going to move down, but they're not going to be. Uh, they're not going to change the direction they're facing. A way you would use that is say you're having like a little fight cutscene and one event hits the other event and knocks that event back. Well, you can turn direction fix on the thing that got struck and then move, move to the left and it'll look like they were pushed back instead of turning and walking away. Um, through is going to let events collide through without causing any actual collision. It's going to let them go right through or if you... Uh, have a, uh, a the player has to like you know rush through three events you can and they're going so fast that they're supposedly dodging or something you can have turn through on those events and then you'll play, the character or player will be able to just run right through them transparent is going to change if they're basically if you can see them or not if transparent is on you can't see it if it's off they're completely visible but underneath that uh, you have change opacity, which will do like shades of gray. So you can have it like 50% see-through. So say you have a character that, that's died and you want them to come back as a ghost. Well, you can just adjust the opacity. So instead of 255, which is completely visible, you can have it like 100, which is mostly invisible. And change image is going to let you change what that image looks like. So you can select a, a new graphic, like maybe you have a movement event that like morphs the character into something else, like a uh, turns into a werewolf or something. You can have a movement route control uh, its whole sequence of animations. Say you have like a uh, a character that you know is like having like a seizure or a fit, and they're walking back and forth, and then they just burst into werewolf. You can have a move around and then change the the image right there in the uh, move, movement event itself. You can change the blend mode so that it draws. Uh, something different it'll just basically look different we'll leave that on there just to show you you can have movement routes play sound effects and even place run scripts so the movement route uh, is pretty awesome feature to have uh, and let's take a look at uh, this event in game so I've set this trigger as a parallel process which is gonna let this happen see we've selected wait right wait for completion if this wasn't a parallel process, then this wait command would cause you, the player, to stand still 
permanently, basically. You wouldn't be able to move. So parallel process is on. That means it's basically just happening alongside all the other events. If you're going to have multiple things on your map, which you most likely will, you're probably going to have a lot of parallel process triggers. So this second event right here is basically just walking a circle around the first event. Same thing happening, parallel process and wait for completion. This third one is doing the same thing. It's walking a circle around both of them. But this one has speed of uh, 4 and frequency of 4. The second event has uh, speed and frequency of 3. That means this one's going to move around and animate faster than this one. And this one isn't moving, so the speed and frequency doesn't really matter. Let's take a look at this in game and see what we created with these three parallel process movement events. And you can see at the end of that movement event, it changed its, uh, its blend mode. So we've got an additive blend mode on the middle one. And the speed of frequency of 3 for, the, for this event, and speed of frequency of 4 for the other one. And if we were to block them and move away, they're not going to mess up their movement route. And the reason why that is, is we didn't check uh, skip if cannot move. I do want to illustrate one more thing. If we do skip if cannot move on this event and we block its movement, what's going to happen is it's going to skip some of these movements and it's going to offset the direction that they're, they're moving and it's going to basically mess up their sequence of running around in circles. So if we skip if cannot move, let's take a look at that and block these NPCs for a second and see what happens. They're going to be wandering around the map a little messed up. You see how it skipped, it couldn't move left, right? That event couldn't move left, so it started doing something else. Let's block an event, block it again. So it messes it up, it just skips. If it can't go up, it will just skip that and go to the next one. So they're just running around crazy. Let's block this one, see what happens. So he couldn't go left, he couldn't go up, so he went right and he just continued his circle. And now he's doing a different circle. So hopefully this helps you, Mega Man. If you did like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe. All the good stuff really helps the channel grow. It lets me know you're interested in these special request tutorials. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next tutorial.